nothing in this car. It's just very safe. Here we go. I'm glad I have a child. I shouldn't think about that. A glimpse within. Inside. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to the Addicted Motors YouTube channel. This will be another installment of Project Range Rover Classic Rejuvenation or Restoration, or just me cutting things haphazardly out of a Range Rover that I shouldn't be doing. I should, I'm not a fabric. All right, so what's happened the last few weeks? Well, not a whole lot. What I have been doing, I'll bring you in here, is cutting the floors. And you saw that video. If you did, I'll link it somewhere up in there. But here's the end state where we are. Right so I have a few decisions to make. Um, but let me, let me reel that in a little bit. So when you're trying to DIY your own steel floors, you need a few things. You need some cutters. You might need a welder. I don't have either of those things. But most importantly, you need steel and weldable steel at a certain gauge. Uh, I decided to go with, um, and I'll get to that part in a, little, in a little bit, 18 gauge for the floor. And then I have a couple pieces of this. And I, the really reason I'm bringing this up is if you're in the, if you're in the States, you can go to Lowe's and for probably more than a metal shop, get pieces of 16 or 22 gauge weldable steel. So, you know, it gave me a place to start. What I did was I got a few pieces, realized it wasn't the most efficient way to do things and then returned them. But I kept a few pieces such as this one. So I'm in a different, I think I'm in a different ballpark than most of the guys I see doing their floors. One, mine were bad, but they weren't like terrible. Like my bulkhead, which you really can't see here, is not completely rusted out. Like the pan was, you know, where your feet, where the water collected over the years was. And I've cut that all out. Um, the sills also not completely rusted out. I've cut out the bad metal, uh, which appears to be around 18 or 16 gauge on the actual floor. But it's not, you know, your, my B pillars are still there. Everything is very much intact, at least on this. Side. Also keep in mind, I'm a complete novice. I've never worked with metal before or pretty much any of these tools. I'm just going for it because I'm pretty sure the cost to bring us to the shop would be over two, $3,000 with fabrication work, which I'm not completely opposed to, but right at the time, I feel like I can do a lot of the prep work myself. Ooh, look at that door open, shoo. Okay, well, there's kind of the secret. So. What I did though, is I went and got these 18 gauge sheets cut at a local uh, steel shop, 70 bucks for two custom plated uh, weldable steel sheets. Um, I am, so I am gonna have to probably cut and this is unavoidable. You know, if I wanted to do it real terribly, which I still might do, I could just cut these to a shape or specification I like and you know, steel or uh, uh, screw, pretty much just screw them into the floor and just coat it the best I can, which I, I still might do, I'm not above it, right? Uh, but here is gonna require some welding. So it's not gonna be that hard. I'm just gonna have to cut the metal to size, get tools to hold it, and then do some tack welds, uh, POR 15 the whole thing, and you know, it's not gonna be in the world. But th this is gonna require a little bit more effort than everything else. But where am I now? So where I'm at now is, I cut these templates of the floor, um, and here's the sheets that I bought. Uh, this is for the passenger side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just cut this little tab here with my new tool. This is called a nibbler, and it was $50 on eBay, and I had to watch the video. Of, uh, you can check out my buddy's channel, Delta Ridge Fabrication. He only does metal work, gates, all kinds of wild stuff. But he just used this on an industrial project. He probably cut about 400 feet of 
18 gauge to gill before it gave up the ghost. But again, I'm not gonna use it for anything to that volume. So I think I'm pretty secure as far as um, my use case here. So I'm gonna start going ahead and just slowly start cutting into this, I think, because I gotta start somewhere because if you don't get momentum on your project, it's not, it's not gonna go anywhere. So, and that's what I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna get started on the passenger side. Uh, I had a couple options, right? So it's either keep this piece in this prefabricated footwell, which I still think I'm gonna do, and then just butt that piece up to it and just kind of you know arrange it correctly. Um, but I am gonna cut this piece so it, it fills over the sill here. And because this isn't at a good angle, none of this is, I don't know, I'm gonna have to fill that in some way or another, but I think I'm gonna have to start making some cuts because, you know, I gotta do it. So here's the nibbler, and as you can see, I'm just gonna put the metal in there and it's gonna use this little oscillating arm to just kind of slowly, slowly cut it. Um, but before that, I'm gonna make some marks and we're gonna get this figured out. So this is the piece that's gonna slot around the passenger seat bracket. So I've got I've kind of, I'm on the fence on this because I don't wanna cut this off and then put the sheet under it, which would be the right thing to do. But it's, it is secure. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just, I think it's okay. I think we're okay. We have enough, I'll show you. We have enough metal around it that I don't think it's in peril of caving in or losing its rigidity, uh, especially once uh, I kind of get that sorted. So well, on another note, what I could do is just cut, cut a slit out of it like that and have it slot. Ah, oh, man, I don't know. All right, so I think this has been made for the better or the worse. So the next thing I've figured out is this piece is just too long to just even fit in there yet. So probably gonna take three or four inches. Start with four inches off the top here. So that'll give me a better idea of how it's gonna slide in. Because I think I'm gonna use the bulkhead for now. So we'll see. All right, so there we go. That was quick and easy. This tool is pretty great. And I have another spare piece, which hopefully will be usable for another application within the truck. So let's go fit this up. All right, so there's the first test fit, um, which actually I should put the other piece in as well. So that's not perfect. That's good enough for government work. I think this piece is gonna then slide that way. It's another good piece of 16 gauge. And then this piece will go in there, and then I'll figure out what happens over there. But it's getting dark, so. All right, we're going to the workshop with my big piece of metal that I'm messing up pretty bad. Uh, first thing I want to do is I'm going to bang this kind of back in because it's dented. Uh, and I want to try to cut this. I didn't make very good cuts here. I'm just going to try to get that out a little better so it's not so sloppy. Uh, and then again, I want to use the template. Let's say I don't decide to put this whole sheet in as one piece. I can always cut it and divide it as needed um, because, you know, it's not that ex expensive and it's still cheaper than paying someone. Yeah, 
Just gonna keep my bathroom, I guess. Oh, man, there's a piece of junk in my gun. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Nice fix. Now, last time I had a vice grips, and with the sale of the manual V1, they're holding together my uh, exhaust manifold. So, you know, you win some, and you definitely lose. I feel like they lose a lot. Oh, that's gonna have to pick up right now. Oh, that's gonna have to pick All right, so it didn't record. Perfect. Uh, it's just what I wanted to do. So next up is this bulkhead piece. Uh, this part, since I'm not really like welding, cutting the old one out and just cutting, you know, putting this one back in and welding it, I'm just gonna just gonna modify it, you know, so it fits for my application the way I want it to. So I'm gonna shear off this piece the best I can, and yeah, hopefully I'll just allow it to sit in the truck better. I could be doing it wrong. I am doing it wrong, okay? But I don't care. That's what I'm doing. All right, uh, didn't catch the Porsche on fire. That's a good thing. Uh, oh, back to the carnage. Yeah, so that piece will do nicely, will do well. It'll be good. That's fine how it is. Next thing I want to actually you know, get rid of those sharp edges, because I'm sure there's wires. And I'm just gonna just completely there, there we went. All right, so I think that's just about enough carnage for one night. I will resume in the next couple of days. This is again a long term project. Uh, so, don't have a complete plan. I should be doing the driver's side first. That would be the smart thing to do. But I think I want to get this just, just kind of, you know, the structure in there. Something I can just pretend. Maybe I'll never weld it. Maybe I'll just keep it as raw metal for a long time. I, don't, I mean, I should learn a trade, basically. Or, or buy a welder. All right, so it's the next day, and let me just show you where I left off. Now this obviously needs a bit more massaging and to fit perfectly, but uh, cutting this piece about, taking about an inch and a half off, really allowed this to sit in the footwell uh, much more flush than it was. It also had to snip the two tabs that are off here that hold the plastic on to allow this to butt up against the bulkhead a little bit better. Because I've got good metal there. I just There's no reason to cut out all the good metal just to put this piece in, so it's kind of additional reinforcement. I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna secure it at some point, but that's a problem for later. Um, the floor piece, again, it's just sitting there as it should. Um, how it's gonna be secured? TBD, um, but right now I kind of like that it is, you know, able to be uh, able to sit there at least, you know, provisionally, let's call it, provisionally installed. Um, and I'm going to have another piece that covers up this bit as well. So let's go over to the driver's side and check that. It's a similar type story on the driver's side. I think everything lines up well uh, for the most part, but up here we have this cable. Um, that pops out through the firewall here, which in, which does not allow this to scoot up far enough. So I'm gonna get the snips and make a nice little cut through there to kind of open that up to allow me to, again, like use the word provisionally, uh, install the footwell for right now. So that fits in a bit better now. I still have to probably snip the plastic tabs there and there that uh, you know traditionally would secure the um, plastic covering that goes here. Because you know I don't think I need that anymore. I think I've got bigger problems. Yeah. Right. Look, I am mean, just so safe. We are ready to party. Um, all right, so now <clears throat> we're gonna swing by my buddy's house with all my metal and gear. And 
and um, check out some metal benders and whatnot. See how see how possible this is. Oh my god, my feet don't. Okay, I don't know if this is improving anything. That side, I, I definitely spent too much time on the passenger side for safety. I should have focused a little more on the driver's side. All right. Hopefully things don't fall out of my car. Nothing to see here, just a more or less rumor. There's actually nothing in this car. It's just very safe. Good to go. I'm glad I have a child. I shouldn't think about that. Uh, I don't know if that noise picks up on camera. It's kind of like a rattly rotational noise coming out of maybe a drive shaft or act. I don't know. I'm hoping it's just something to do with the exhaust that is a little bit loose. Um, but that's a noise. Alright, so we're back at my house. We bent this piece and uh, mistakes were made. I kind of grossly overestimated the amount of bend that I needed, but that's okay. I can always bend it back. Um, and yeah, I'll probably end up bending it back slightly and just kind of see what that does. Cause it's not going to be perfect um, just because there's going to be a gap there and I've got to come up with some more plans. So that is where we're at with all this junk. Super enthusiastic, <laughs> but that's why I called a project. All right, welcome back a couple days later, uh, which is how these things work. So, so this is the original piece that I just showed me bending and shaping into the driver's side floor. And I realized that I put this bend in too much. Not gonna cut it. Um, so I'm gonna do Rev 2. So this is Rev 2. And what I realized I didn't do is get a wide enough sheet. So what I'm gonna do here is cut the same uh, indentation or slit for the um, chair mount, seat mount, you want to call it. Um, and I'm also going to slightly cut out an indentation to fit around the underbelly of the seat. And then I'm going to have it bent up this way. And it might probably make more sense once I cut it. Um, so that will probably allow me some better clearance um, for putting it in the truck. So I'm going to go ahead and use the nibbler and cut that out. You want to switch? Cindy. Howdy, welcome back to the Addicted Motors YouTube channel. We are up early in the Rover Support vehicle. Yeah, the 92 Plymouth Voyager um, for Rover Support. But no, it's nothing broken down just yet. We're gonna go uh, fine. So I'm, again, in process of redoing the floors on my 89 Classic. Um, and the electric seats that are in there are just garbage. They're, they're absolutely, they're probably the worst seats I've ever seen in any type of vehicle. And I've driven some shit. Um, so I found a set of um, manual D1 seats, which should bolt right in if I have the brackets water on, which I don't. Uh, but eventually they'll, they'll bolt right in. So we're gonna go pick up those right now, um, headed up to the Cartersville area of Virginia um, to Rover Shop. Now, I'm gonna save the, uh, the unveiling, but uh, they got some pretty interesting stuff up there. So you guys might wanna follow along and check it out. Uh, so like back road carving in a uh, 30 year old minivan with no front suspension. We used to do some drives on these roads with sportier vehicles, but uh, definitely more engaging in something with uh, really no brakes or steering or suspension or contact patch or, or anything. It's, it's a bit, it's a bit odd. See, this is, you know, this is like, just like the type of area you'd find some rovers and uh, the rovers we shall. Man. And I'd say we are in the right place. Oh, man. <laughs> Good stuff all around. Broken LR3s, classics, and a couple series trucks. Got a P38, got a couple D1s, D2, 
Uh, green LR3, more series trucks. Not too, too bad. All right, so I didn't film a whole video. Uh, got to talking to Drew about what we have out here, but uh, yeah, so that 08 LR3 needs a motor. They're gonna swap it in, it'll be for sale. That one I've done a quick video on. That other LR3 would be for sale as well. Also have a couple other trucks. So yeah, if you guys are interested in a uh, in a couple decent trucks, that silver one I just showed, I'll drop some pictures in the, the video. Um, 200 truck, 150,000 miles. It will have a new motor when it's done. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff it's good to kind of keep tabs on every once in a while. But uh, yeah, it's always good seeing where these, uh, where these little places are and uh, you know, guys that uh, have, have the addiction to keep this shit alive because that's what it's really all about. All right, howdy, welcome back to the Addicted Motors YouTube channel. I don't know where I'm gonna slot this video in, in the full floor restoration of my classic video, but let's just start from here. And as you can see, I made some purchases. Now, okay, let's not get too carried away. This is $377 worth of Harbor Freight's finest Flux 125 welder. Have I welded before? Absolutely not. Am I about to burn shit? I am. Am I going to potentially hurt myself? No, because I've got a $10 pair of welding gloves and a $41 mask. So let's go ahead and uh, cause some destruction in my garage and probably get some slag on the Porsche. I'm excited to kick this off. So my garage is currently ground zero for all my in-flight projects which is not a good thing. I have extra chrome cladding for the arches of my F250, which is still getting painted. It's been two months and he still hasn't done the work. So that's a whole nother story. I've got a new sender for the uh, classic. I've got $40 for the poor 15. I've got paint brushes. I've got prep stuff. I mean, this is all here. Oh, I've got the driver and passenger seats ready to go uh, for the classic. I have uh, a set of rear brake discs and pads for the LR3. This is how problems start, ladies and gentlemen. This is this is where you start projects and they go to die. I'm trying to break through. Oh, this is <laughs> this is underbody protection for the 911. Uh, I found some like cracked protection pieces um, and I've just been accumulating. This is what happens when you have a kid. You just accumulate and you never finish the thing. All right, but back to welding. Oh, and I bought this. I don't know. So I can bend steel. It's just, um, oh, and yeah, that I'm, you know, I'm basically, I'm basically at China. I watched two videos, right? On the YouTube. <laughs> hey, shout out to YouTube. Uh, so let's just, let's just get this set up, start welding. How hard can it be? All right, so cue, lip, cue the music. I wish Harbor Freight sponsored me. Harbor Freight, Freight Glory. You know, as I'm unboxing this, I'm just thinking to myself, like how many times has this been packed up and repacked or returned and reopened? This is just, this is the beginning of, or the end of any DIY, DIYers dreams. This could be a good thing or a bad thing. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see where we fall on the spectrum. Um, yeah, time to uh, read the directions. I don't know, that, that doesn't sound fun. All right, let's start with, I, with what I know. I know I need to open this. And I've got to spool in some 30 aught, 30 wire, 0 0.030 mild steel flux core wire, which did not come with this. So I'm glad I got a reel. Um, so this is gonna slot in here and I'm gonna feed it through here. And there's these two little wheels here and that will feed it through there and then out there. And I have to remove this little feeder tip so it will come out. 
And that's where we're gonna start. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that and probably mess it up. Okay, so we got the wire spooled in here. You kind of crank this open, it pops up, you shove the wire through, de boop, de boop. Uh, I have it plugged in. Next thing you're supposed to do is turn it on. Turn it on. Turn it on. Oh, that's not it. That's something outside. What is the on button? On button is in the back. All right, it's on. I took the copper tip out of this. Um, so we're gonna hit the cold feed button. It looks like it's doing its thing. Hopefully, I'm gonna start seeing it come out. We're almost there. This is so, this is so bad. All right, so here we're, here we're at. Here's where we're at. Bad ideas. So I've got my little piece of 18 gauge steel. I've got my welder clamped, grounded to the vise, to the wood table. And right now, some of you might be screaming at your TVs, but that's okay, because we're gonna see what this does. Uh, this welder I've got set to three and I've got sent to B something because that's what the Thule thing says. Um, so we are, so yeah, it's 18 gauge, th wire speed, voltage B5. Yep, three minutes of welding, seven minutes of resting. What can go wrong? Okay, so. That was a welding thing. Pretty terrible, but working. I think uh, you really need a metal table. I, you know, grounding it to itself like that. Look at the slag flying everywhere. Those are absolutely terrible. Um, but I understand the concept of the mass now. There is definitely a little bit of delay. Um, have to move much slower because it's a flux. I don't think it's hot enough. I mean, it's probably, probably is. Um, but I'm just gonna keep playing with this piece of steel because, you know, whatever. Hopefully it doesn't mess my phone up. <laughs> All right, so not dimes on the first attempt, but I mean, I get it. It makes sense. Um, we're going to have to do a little more research and, and figure out how to do this a little bit more correctly. But pretty fun, I guess, for the first time. Go around. I stuck metal to metal, which is pretty cool. And, well, excuse me, I guess if I wire brush that, you know, you can fix your mistakes um, and make it look like you kind of give a shit. So 
I don't know, that's kind of interesting. We'll see what's gonna happen once we progress into the car. Not that that's happening anytime soon, or maybe not tonight at least, um, but we'll see where this endeavor brings us. So yeah, interesting enough, I, uh, I guess we'll see what happens next, yay. All right, so that was beta testing. It's the next night, and I'm pretty impatient. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get the welder. I'm just gonna go ahead and start welding a piece of metal on the truck because that's what you do. So I am I'm basically a craftsman. If you want your custom defenders built, let me know. I will weld it. So I'm gonna clean up the metal that's on around and surrounding um, where the new cuts are gonna be, and we're just gonna start going to town. So this channel's all about. so appalling I know um, I'm not I'm moving too quickly I'm not really getting a great feel on it but it's on there I mean that's that's on there that's not pretty that's not amazing but that is on there so we're gonna we're gonna keep chugging along all right a little bit of progress I want to hear your comments in the bottom let me know how I'm doing <laughs> all right kids so my grinder is dead this piece of metal is secured to that piece of metal. I was gonna, you know, zip, 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 make this all a little, cl a little cleaner. But look at the bottom, not as bad on my second round. Um, so I don't hate that. And I'll definitely, you know, kind of smooch that in a little bit better um, after I get this all kind of sorted. But yeah, not too bad, Harbor Freight. I mean, it's for like another 300 bucks. So I'm gonna charge everything up and we'll uh, try to get this piece and this piece, only two more pieces to uh, get this rocker panel and then we're gonna get cooking on the floors. This is exciting. All right, so it's day two and uh, I shaved down some of the metal from last night's endeavors. I also cut my two pieces that will be slotting in here on the sill. And I don't know if this is the best place for it, but this is where I'm gonna stick it. So there's gonna be one, I'm gonna put piece not this piece I've got a another piece here it is got this piece here and that will complete at least the main structural portion of this sill uh, and then we'll try to fill in this and this um, but we're gonna go ahead and get started limited time So here's the new piece in there. Not too bad. This needs to be cleaned up. That's another little patch. That's all taking shape. How it looks. Man, drop the helmet. How it looks underneath. Not terrible. I'm sure it's terrible. I don't care. It's secure. It's fine. Guys, it'll work. It's better than not having anything at all. Um, so here comes number two. We're gonna tack it on there. And, uh, and yeah, just go ahead and we're gonna knock all, I mean, we're gonna be done today, not bad.
I'd say that's improvement. So that's gonna conclude this video. Like I said, I'm pretty happy with the result of my sills. Now it just needs to be prepped and painted and put the body filler and all that kind of stuff. So look at that, that's there, that's, a, that's, that's workable. It's better than nothing. Uh, so next is gonna be the floors, guys. So I'm gonna do a lot more prep, install the seats, but I'm excited, I hope you are too. Uh, like I said, anyone can do this. This is way cheaper than paying someone to do it. It's way more fun to learn yourself and you're not really gonna hurt anything or mess anything up because it's just an old piece of crap truck. So um, it's, it's, it's fun so far. So uh, remember, peace, subscribe, like, do all that fun YouTube stuff. I looked at my metrics, uh, only 7% of my viewers are actually subscribed. So please hit that subscribe button, bring you some more interesting content. I bought another manual D1. I'll release a video on that when it gets here. So have a, have a good night. Uh,